she just does her work and eats lunch by herself and she just stays tries to help people's way. That's just how she feels about things. And, and I, I tell you, it's good to see hungry souls like that. It makes you feel bad of how much we take for granted back home fellowship we have and see each other three times a week and have people order houses and fellowship all we want. And those people there can't get enough and 12 hours a day wasn't enough for the five or six days we was there. But uh, just remember them in prayer, Brother and Sister Ram and his family, and I ain't going to say any more. Brother Dave and Sister Rupa have some things to say, and we'll say some things later. But just remember them and all these other needs. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, Father, we are so thankful for this day and hour which we live, my God. Lord, for you are at this end time, Lord. We are finishing this thing up, my God. Father, thou hast overshadowed us. Give us the best that you have, Lord. And Father, we thank Thee for all the truth that You have showed us, Lord, for Your salvation, for Your mercy and Your grace, Lord God. Our Father, we lift these requests up to Thee. You see the brothers and sisters in need, the situations of life, the colds, the flu bugs, stomach bugs, Lord. Things are more serious than others, Lord. But Lord, it's all under Thy hand, Lord. Under Thy control, my God. May You help us through all these trials. Touch every situation, Lord. Build up the faith that is needed, my God, and give peace in these circumstances, we pray. Be with this service, Lord. Bless each song, every singer, Lord God, the musicians, Father, everyone that have a part in this evening's service, Lord. Have thy perfect way in all things, we pray. And, Lord, we do remember Brother and Sister Ram and their family, Lord, and others, Lord, around the world that are away from faith assembly or a church that they can go to, Lord. Father, we are thankful that they can see this on the Internet, Lord, and they can hear, and that we can hear from them through the Internet, Lord. But, Father, it's not the same as being in contact face-to-face, -face, my God. But, Father, Thou will provide, my God. I thank You for being able to go on a trip, Lord, to visit my brothers and sisters, Lord God. Lord, I thank Thee for the truth that You showed Brother Allen and Brother Bud is, and the truth that they stand for, Lord. Father, that they will feed hungry souls from all around this world. No one will be left out if they're hungry for Thee, Lord God. For, Lord, if there is a question, Lord, from the deep, there has to be an answer from the deep, my God. And Thou hast us all the answers, my Lord. We thank Thee and praise Thee for all things. In that precious name of Jesus Christ we ask. Amen. <coughs> As Brother Steve said, it's good to be back. You know, it is kind of with a sad heart that you had to kind of leave um, the saints over there. Um, I won't say much more, but we'll, we'll talk in a minute. But it, it was just one of the most enjoyable times I've had in my life. And I just thank the Lord for it. I love this family of God. So
Seated, Brother Dwayne, would you have a song for us? And Sister Beth Ann, how about you after that? Whoa. 
Thank you for that, brother. All right, Sister Beth, if you would come on. And Brother Charles, how about you after that? Sister Michelle, how about you after that? When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, If you are discouraged thinking all is lost, Count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings one by one. Count your blessings, see what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. If you are discouraged, laden down with care, if the cross you're called to, it is hard to bear. Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings one by one. Count your blessings, see what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings one by one. Count your blessings and see what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings one by one. 
Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. And Brother Chris, how about you and Brother Tim and Sister Sharon? Thank you all for that. All that you all would come on.
from the battle and I've lost another round Satan whispers to my troubled mind just lay your armor down there are those you loved and trusted look around you they're all gone it would be easy to surrender when you're standing all alone then I bow my head in sadness as I ponder what to do and I've been in God's army for I've been a soldier true Then I hear a voice from heaven Saying, Pilgrim, it is I Lift your head and take the courage Keep your eyes toward the sky And I see a great band of angels camped all around me And I see the captain rising up A child is to me well, I know I'm saved for that and thank you each one of you for your songs I'll turn the service over to Brother Allen at this time let us stand for a word of prayer uh, let us pray for Sister Smith Heavenly Father thank you for this privilege of being back faith assembly again tonight and to be able to uh, just thank you, Lord, for your wonderful grace to us and for the trip that you've given us. Lord, for your protection on travel there and back home and for, Lord, your goodness to us that you have almost rested our bodies to the point that, Lord, it's almost of none effect to us. We thank you for these things. Only you can do that, Lord. After traveling all those miles and all, and sitting so long in an airplane, we thank you, Lord, for your wonderful grace to us and your blessings and love. 
Lord, as our brother and sister would come out to say the things that's on their heart, may you bless them, Lord, and may you help them. And may you give them words to speak and to say, Lord, that would be of a blessing to your people, of Lord, of what they've been able to view and see and been able to hear. Lord, I thank you for Brother and Sister Ram and their family, Lord, that showed such grace and graciousness to us in the time that we were permitted to be there. May you bless them, Lord, each one of them. We pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated tonight. I think Brother David and Sister Ruth will be the ones speaking here tonight. And uh, then Brother Steve and Sister Elsie Sunday night. So I think it would be worth your while to hear what they have to say. And I know it will. May the Lord bless them. My Sister Ruth had never rode in an airplane before. And I told her she got the ride of her life, 19,000 miles there and back. And about... Uh, 14,000 of it over water. And it's, uh, she really done good though. Brother David had been on a plane before, but she never had, and she really, really enjoyed it. And uh, may the Lord bless her heart as she comes to say what she has to say this time. Sister Ruth. I'm not a speaker, so just pray for me. Um, first of all, I just want to give greetings to everyone back in South Africa. Brother Ram and his family, his children, his, his, his in-laws, uh, brothers, you know, he has, uh, uh, I'll just give their names. Uh, it's Brother and Sister Ram and Alvin and his wife, Rebecca, um, their daughter, Nolene, and their other daughter, Elaine, and her husband, Kershon. Um, we miss you, and we look forward to when we can see you all again. Um, it's, I thank you. It's just a privilege to go. I mean, not just to see Africa because um, it's a beautiful country, but even more beautiful was the people there and the fellowship that we had. When we met, it was like we knew him for years. There was a connection that... Um, you just knew that it was the way it is with the Bride of Christ. You know, you could just sit and talk with them. There was just uh, just a comfort, I mean, it just an ease with them. Um, and when, when David first missioned the church to South Africa, um, my main concern was health issues. Um, I, I did not want to go over there and be a hindrance. I wanted to be an encouragement, an enliftment for them. Um, but in return, they were more of an encouragement to me. Um, they were wonderful. Um, um, like I said, I'd never flown before, um, but God gave me a peace. I mean, I was not afraid. Um, on the trip back from Johannesburg to Atlanta, it was raining and storming, and we had turbulence, and I loved it. I mean, it was... <laughs> I enjoyed it. I uh, enjoyed the takeoff. I enjoyed the landing. <laughs> I just, I really enjoyed it, uh, you know, and I had the winds, wind, the, where the uh, wings were, and they were going up and down, and I just, I didn't, I had a peace, and I know that was the Lord, and I know the Sunday night before we left, everyone was coming up and saying goodbye, and um, Sister Tricia come to me, and she said, most of all, she said, I pray for a great trip, but I pray for your health, and he blessed me. I've been having migraines um, every week that lasted three to four days. Um, and then a couple of days, good days, and a bad one would come. Um, but, you know, I felt wonderful there. I, I started with a headache on Sunday, of course. <laughs> the devil wants to get you. Um, but I was able to take my medicine. I didn't have any effects like I usually do. I did not 
throw up, nothing. Um, you know, the next day we went out and I, I wasn't able to spend one supper with them because I was just kind of under the weather with stomach problems and everything. But other than that, I, I felt wonderful. I mean, I, I was blessed. The Lord blessed me. And uh, like, like I said, when, when we met them, um, you know, we got up to where they were, but there was a glass door that they couldn't come through, but we seen them. And I mean, it was just smiles. And, and when we got through there, it was smiles and hugs. And, and uh, like I said, it was, it was just like we knew them, you know, from day one. And, and uh, you know, when we got there, they took us to our hotel. And I have never stayed in a hotel like that in my life. It was beautiful. Um, we, from our window, we had an ocean view all the way around. Um, it was, uh, it was beautiful. Um, and when we got in our rooms, we each had uh, packets, gift packets for each one of us. Um, they filled our little refrigerator full of drinks. It was continuously full of drinks. Uh, anything we needed was right there. And we, uh, Brother and Sister Ram's daughter, Elaine, her husband, Kirshen, even had a Welcome to South Africa booklet there that he had made. Things about South Africa. Um, they had an itinerary for us every day. They wanted us to see South Africa. And we went on a safari, seen many things, and David's going to show you pictures of that. Um, and they took us to a place where there was whales. We ate supper with a, with a water, wa water, I mean a window there with sharks swimming around. Um, but after a couple of days, um, I said, uh, you know, because it was a lot of running around for them. And I said, would you all enjoy just getting together and fellowshipping in your home? And they said yes. And that was wonderful. To me, that was more than any sight that I've seen there. Uh, they were able to sit around, and they just asked Brother Allen questions. And you could just tell they were drinking it in. I mean, they, they literally sit there with their hands like this and just in awe. They were just, I mean, just so happy for, for company. You know, it's just the seven of them alone. Um, they do everything together. They shop together. You know, they come to sister, Brother and Sister Rama's house and fix, uh, eat supper there. Um, they're just a cl closely knit family. And, and one thing I noticed is those kids love and respect their parents. I mean, you could just see it. It was, it was wonderful. Just the conversation was always on the Lord. I mean, we talked about things. They ask us everything, you know, what we eat for breakfast, you know, what, all that kind of stuff. Um, but the conversation was always on the Lord. And there was no question or doubt in their mind about Brother Bud and Brother Allen. No question. Are we in the third day or not? No question. They're not right in the fence. They are following truth. They don't waver. And it... it like I said, they, they were an example to me. They, they truly were. I mean, the kindness. Uh, we were treated like royalty from the minute we got off that plane till we left. They met every need. Um, we went and had supper at their house. And, uh, I mean, we were fed. I didn't lose any weight. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I didn't lose any weight. I think I put on a couple. So, but that's Okay. Uh, one night, uh, I mean, Sister Angie, um, Brother Ram's wife, is a wonderful cook. Uh, there was one night we had, in one meal, two types of steaks, lamb curry, mutton, some kind of sausage, sausage I don't know the name, but it was very good and hot and spicy. Um, and just, like I said, they had, the meals were just unbelievable. And Sister Angie, Brother Ram's wife, said, Lord willing, if she ever gets here, she's going to be in the kitchen. She wants to help you all cook. I said, well, no, normally we, you know, you don't have to. And she said, no, I want to cook because she loves to cook. And um, like I said, they're just um, a very precious people. Um, they're lonely, extremely lonely. Um, you can just see it. Um, you know, when we left, there were tears. I mean, literally sobbing. They just, they really appreciate all of us. And, um like I said, I, I went there 
to be an encouragement and an enlistment. But in return, they were to me. You know, they, they made me realize what a privilege it is to have a church. To be able to come and listen to Brother Bud and Brother Allen in person. When we have a need, we can come up for prayer. We have all you brothers and sisters that can get together and fellowship, and they don't have that. And it was a, an awakening for me. I thank the Lord for that. You know, it made you realize if you can, you, you should be here because it truly is a privilege. And like I said, there, there were many tears shed when we left. Um, they have a lot of needs that I pray the Lord blesses them with them. They've, they've made so many sacrifices through years um, to get to truth, to even get to church. There were times they had to walk. 30, 35 minutes to get to church because they had no automobile, but they did it. Before they had the automobile, they would buy, do public transportation. And when they did that, they had to ride a bus. They would get there an hour early. When church was over, they would have to sit there for an hour and wait for their bus. So, I mean, they, they, they really... Um, they really want to hear the word and, and hear the truth. And like I said, I never dreamt that I could get that close to people in that close to that short a time. Like I said, there was just a closeness that I, I can't explain. And I, like I said, I was just impressed in their in their manner, in their conversation, in their appearance, and, and it just. I think it was more of a blessing for me. Like I said, I, I always wanted to go to a tropical place, and this was, it was wonderful. It was beautiful. Uh, they took me to the ocean. I'd never really been to the ocean. So they took me there. The waves hit me. It scared me to death, but I enjoyed it. Um, but like I said, they, they met every one of our needs. Um, we never had to ask, uh, you know, like Brother, they'd ask Brother Allen when he wanted supper, and he'd say tomorrow. Because we ate so much food. I mean, it, they, we did not go hungry. Um, but like I said, it, it, um, it truly was a, a blessing. And, you know, they kept thanking us for making the sacrifice. They kept thanking us for that. And it was no sacrifice. I want them to know it was no sacrifice. It was a privilege. I mean, it, it really was. You know, everybody told me you're going to have jet lag and feel terrible when you get home. And I feel wonderful. And I know that was a little. So I just want to tell them, hi. <laughs> uh, we love you. We're thinking about you. We're praying for you. And um, I know they, when people would come up and sing, they would ask, who is that? Who is that? You know, so their true desire is to get here. I pray that, you know, they've went so many times to get a visa to come here. And they're almost interrogated. They are. Um, so I just pray that somehow, Lord willing, they can get here because that's their desire. So, but um, I wish I could say more. There's more in here to say, but I can't get it out. But um, I do want to say I appreciate all of you. I appreciate Brother Allen. I've never really been able to been out with him with other people. He, he, he was a blessing. Uh, I think he did better than I did keeping up. He was... <laughs> I was always behind him. He was He's good. And I appreciate Brother Steve and Sister Elsie. I mean, um, through the airport, Steve got us right through. I mean, that's a lot that they do that I, I appreciate. And I think sometimes goes un, you know, unthanked. And I appreciate that. And um, like I said, I miss them all. And uh, we're thinking of praying for you. Thank you. <laughs>
that thou were sent to not only be a light and a representation of this assembly, but also that to be a light of what I have done in the midst of mortal man. My daughter, thou hast done well. And I say unto thee, as I have, as I have changed that of thy daily routine, there is for thee a great change in thy physical being and in thy spiritual being that lies just before thee. For I say in the days that shall come, thou shalt be removed of every infirmity that does now beset thee. And that great blackness that has plagued thee for years, thus saith the Holy Ghost, shall one morning be no more. Little, my, little one of mine, I say rejoice in what I have given thee. For thou in the kingdom to come, there is a place reserved for thee at the king's table. For thou art a great jewel in that of my crown. Thus saith the Holy Ghost. tonight I, I appreciate our sister because she did show a light for it as we were there other David is um, is going to come at this time and he's going to show some slides and things and different things that he's going to do here tonight as well as speak about the trip himself and I want him to come at this time. May the Lord bless our brother. I sure appreciate these two. I'll go ahead and show the slides first and then I'll talk some. I promise I'll get through them quick. There's only about 1,100, so it won't be that bad. <laughs> no, there's not that many. <laughs> um, Brother Steve took some video, so I'm sure you'll see um, some better things Sunday. I'm not a picture taker, so. Um, but I'll show you what we did take. Um, like Ruth said, we just... We didn't want for anything. It was just a truly amazing experience. Like she said, when we got there, you saw their faces out there smiling, and um, it was just an immediate connection. And and I'm not someone, I mean, you know, ask me to sing, I can sing, but ask me to talk, and that's a whole different story, and I've never been comfortable with that. And I'm not one to make small talk with people very easily, but it was just... They were just full of the Holy Spirit and just made you feel so welcome. And it was just a very easy um, to talk with them and get real close very quickly. So I, I can't thank them enough for the experience. And um, they brought us there. So they, they're they the ones that made the sacrifice. They, they did this whole thing, and it was just a wonderful, rewarding experience. Um, the hotel that they put us in, um, it was called Coastlands, and in the city of Durban, it was the tallest place we could see. Um, there was plenty of other hotels there, but they just did everything that they could to make us feel comfortable. So it was just, I can't say enough. <laughs> So in the main lobby, here's a little person we got to see every day, this little statue. <laughs> you, you probably can't see him very much, but it was a little man bowed over, so it was kind of funny seeing him every day. But this hotel was only a few years old, um, 
and it was just really kind of the nicest architecture and it's not going to work so yeah so here's just some pictures of in the middle of our floors looking down it was all open go on it, just different pictures to show you what it looked like there and this was from our room and we thought these were maybe fishing boats or something but Durban is one of the biggest um, harbors in the South Africa there so there was ships just lined up every day waiting to come in and load or unload um, exports or import material and one day we counted 17 of them just out there so that was kind of a, a morning ritual to get to see those sitting out there and watch them come in these were views from the room but it was just uh, it was a big opening for me you know you think of Africa if you see it on TV it's always displayed as a desert with you know the little trees out there and not much greenery well, in South Africa it's a total different picture um, that's the biggest um, producer of sugarcane in that area so the fields that just look like grass it's all full of sugarcane and it's a pretty mountainous region so um, this was just out the window but the sugarcane just it's harvested all the time uh, the weather there stays like 80 to 85 every day so they say it mirrors a lot of like Las Vegas here it is it is humid at times but the weather's just perfect you can keep going so these were just more pictures of just the scenery from on top there this was out driving um, the first day we after we were in we went to their house and um, keep going the roads there the highway um, it was pretty impressive they have toll roads there but the the price pays to keep those roads up and the roads looked like they were swept every day the emergency lanes and everything there was not a bit of dirt if there's a wreck with glass and everything within 24 hours to 48 at the most it's all swept up nothing's ever um, no potholes nothing so it's they really have a, a good system there um, here's kind of looking at the countryside there you can see the houses and everything in the city of Durban it it's more of a better district uh, the houses were a little bit better they do have a lot of because crime is still kind of prevalent there at times they do have a lot of gated communities so you know you drive up to a little subdivision where we would see apartments here there's a big gate that goes all the way around it everybody has their own code to get in um, they still have to keep bars on the windows and stuff like that so they still have to always have that respect that you know somebody could break in this is at brother and sister Ram's house the first day we were sitting there and um, they took every opportunity to ask brother Allen questions and you know it's we're fortunate that we have a witness that was still able to see Brother Branham's ministry and we have some here that were able to witness that and he was able to relate those stories he told the story of Becky and um, what Billy received on the prophecy there of her and um, they just they ate it up they just were full of questions and just wanted to know more about the truth and um, Brother Ram and Sister Ram the whole family they have wonderful testimonies as far as what the Lord's done for them um, I can't remember all the details but um, brother Ram especially for years before he became a Christian he had a skin disease that just left him head to toe just always in pain his skin was always itching I don't know what it would have been like here but um, they sent him home with this big vat of stuff that he had to rub on and that was walking home again too that was before they had a car and um, he had seen everything all the doctors and everything and even the kids said that they can remember getting up and seeing him in, at night sitting in front of the heat because the heat would dry the skin and he would just peel it off in layers and he was just in severe pain and at one point the doctor told him you just need to go home and pray to whatever God you have because there's nothing more they can do and you know that's when the Lord moved on his behalf and um, uh, you know I think the Lord did s such a wonderful thing for him to help sustain them through the years for what they've had to go through with not having any truth um, to hold on that was in the lobby when we was getting ready to go one day this is the building that we had church at and the Lord moved on that behalf too it was a perfect little place they were going to rent a place in the hotel for us but you know they didn't want to 
do anything that would create a ruckus or anything. And they checked around for several buildings and they found this one and it's kind of like our Home Builders Association. It's their building where they have um, offices, but there's a conference floor on the top. And um, it was just perfect. You know, nobody was there. We were only play people there at night. And um, it was just a wonderful little room. This is the entire family um, there, and I'll show you. This is Brother Ram and Sister Angie right here, and this is their daughter, Nolene, and this is Elaine and her husband, Kirshen, and then this is their son, Alvin, and his wife, Rebecca. And you would never, you would almost think that the in-laws of their kids too and they said that they said we don't have a son-in-law or a daughter-in-law we have a daughter and a son extra and they just had such a respect for each other this was inside the building here it was already set up it had a projector um, tables that they were able to set up facing the front so it was just really a blessing to have a little establishment like that the first night we didn't have a um, brother Allen didn't have a presentation so they had him sitting up at the front and um, but he was just right at home and was able to preach and um, his title was in the beginning and um, it was really good they really enjoyed it and um, answered a lot of questions I believe for him this is right outside of their home right there in the subdivision they live in they have monkeys supposedly we didn't get to see them at their house they kept promising that they would come and they tried their hardest, but where the airport came in, it, it forced all the monkeys to migrate out. So every day around 4 o'clock, they come ravaging through the village. And um, they can't leave their windows open or something. They One day, I think it was Brother Ram walked in the kitchen, and there's a monkey sitting there with a bag of marshmallows. So he chased it, and it went outside, and it's just sitting there eating them. <laughs> so um, I know Nolene said she came in one day and was brushing her teeth and looks up, and here's one sitting in the window watching her. So... It, um, it, you know, we kept hoping to see one, but um, I think Brother Steve was the fortunate one. He got to see him, but um, it was pretty neat. <laughs> this was, they took us to a mall there, and I've never seen a mall like it, and the only thing that I could compare it to is um, the Mall of America. I think it's in Minneapolis, Minnesota, but um, it was enormous. It was four, four stories, and I don't know how big it was. It was just, we only walked through maybe a fourth of it. It was just amazing. But um, they took us there, and this was at McDonald's, and that's the first time Brother Ram and Sister Ram had McDonald's. <laughs> so they don't eat at, um, fast food that much. But Ruth and I had to have our large Coke. So, <laughs> And this was inside. There was a big fountain there. And um, so we was just kind of watching that. So you can ignore that picture right there. <laughs> that's Sister Nolene right there. And um, she's the one that... Um, they weren't really, and I'm sure Steve will go into some of this, so I'm not going to go into it too much, but the Lord really kind of is the one that spoke to her and introduced her to the website. They didn't really know that we had one. And um, the Lord spoke to her and told her to do a search on her phone. And um, they found it, and they said that that was just an answer to prayer. Um, they are able to watch all the archives. The network in South Africa is... A little slow it's not near as fast as what ours is so for them to try to watch live they can't it's just really slow they can listen to the audio maybe so they watch all the archives and um it, it's just the lord's really done a lot for them to answer their prayers this is some of the countryside you can see here as you start going further out in town that's where you start seeing some of the lower income housing and things it gets a little worse but um, this was the stuff they brought in. They brought their little um, plaque there from home and stuff to make it as comfortable as possible in the church right there. That's just another picture of them. There's a picture with Brother Ellen with them too. This was waiting in the lobby one day to go. And their, their children all have... You know, the Lord's really blessed their jobs there. Uh, most people, it's kind of like here a lot of times if you, depending on what your skill set is, if you want a better paying job, sometimes we have to kind of cross the river and go to Louisville versus being able to work in Indiana. 
And it's kind of the same thing. There, if you want a really good job, you have to go to Johannesburg, and that's like 400 miles away. And um, so I think Alvin was almost at that point once, but the Lord moved on behalf and opened a job up there. And um, so they've all got, you know, really nice jobs that they're able to stay home. And they all live fairly close to each other, but like Ruth said, they're at their parents' house every night. That's just, that's how tight-knit they are. Here's some more pictures of them in the church there. Um, the whole family sang. Um, Sister Angie, she sings, and then the kids all sing together, and then Sister Nolene sang by herself. So I think maybe Steve might have some of that on video for you Sunday. This was the last night he videotaped them talking to Faith Assembly. So you'll hear some greetings from them and everything. That was the last night, I believe. This was our first day there at their apartment. They had a cake, welcome to South Africa. All kinds of food. Um, I can't pronounce what they were. I know I taught... Uh, Really like the top left corner, whatever that was. <laughs> it kind of reminded me of like an egg roll with cheese in it, so it was really good. That was some pictures outside of their house right there. This was in the service. Most of these were on my phone, so it doesn't take the best of pictures. We didn't have music, so this was kind of an experience for us, too. Everything was a cappella, but the Lord was still there, and he met our needs, so it was good. Um, this was at Brother Kirshen and um, Elaine's apartment. They had um, Brother Allen come and... Um, do like a dedication or a blessing over each of their apartments there. So This picture right here, um, like Ruth said, we kind of started having some time where we just kind of sat with them. And this was in the hotel lobby that one night we just ended up eating supper at the hotel. And we sat there, and I think it must have been probably three hours talking. And um, they just used every opportunity to ask questions. They're so hungry for what life is like here in America and um, what the saints are like here. Um, they see our faces, but they don't always hear, you know, the names all the time. So they were just asking all kinds of questions and a lot of stuff about Brother Branham. And like I said, that gave Brother Allen the opportunity to relate those stories. You know, this is, um, well, I didn't mean to have that picture in there. Steve's going to be talking about one place that we went, the marina. You can go on past it. This was just outside driving. I believe we're getting ready to come up on. They took us to an animal reserve, and that was a two-and-a-half-hour drive. It's the biggest game reserve in South Africa. Um, it had all kinds of animals. <laughs> there was everything there. Um, and, you know, that was a big sacrifice right there. They drove two of their vehicles there, loaded us all up, and took us. And um, we had such a good time talking. You know, you think sometimes, oh, my gosh, a two-and-a-half-hour drive, what am I going to be able to say? But the conversations just flowed. They just asked questions, or we were asking questions of them. And um, it was really a good time. We, let's see here. We did get out on this drive. You are getting into Zulu, Africa. Um, and this is a way out there where the kids all have to walk to school. And... I'm talking little little children that are out walking by themselves. They all wear uniforms, and um, they do make the uniforms very cost-effective over there.
But these kids are out walking, what they said, sometimes maybe, you know, 30 minutes to an hour just to get to school. And I'm talking little five-year-olds out by themselves walking. And, um, you know, as a parent here, we're so overprotective of trying to know every minute where my child is. And there, they're just out. You know, they have to just rely that someone's watching over them. But they said that they're so hungry to get an education there. Because if you can get an education, you can make it. But without it, it's hard. Here's a cow just walking on the street. <laughs> Another thing. This was the place. I don't know how to pronounce it. But it was a big game reserve. Um, it's one of the last places that has the white rhino. Rhinoceroses are being killed, poached at a high rate there. It was on the news almost every night um, just to get that horn off, and that's it, and kill them. So it's a big, um, it's a big offense there. It was kind of a little nerve-wracking. At one point, we were in there driving. It's a driving trail. You just go up in there by yourself. And um, at one point, this big truck pulls past, and all these guys are standing in the back with guns <laughs> and with a ski mask over. And I thought, OK, <laughs> what's getting ready to happen? <laughs> but they said that that was probably the people that are actually trying to find the poachers out there. So, um, But yeah, it was, it was interesting. These were just some of the shots there, and you'll see some of the animals we started seeing. The scenery was just, like I said, it became a really mountainous region. Uh, the little war hogs, they were everywhere, all over the place. They were the first thing we seen, and um, there was quite a bit. So needless to say, I think you're supposed to have your car tuned up when you go in this place. You don't want to break down because you'd really be kind of stuck. <laughs> um, there was all kinds of birds, and... Um, that's some of the hills. You just see how, I mean, it was, I don't know how many miles, but it was just went on and on. Um, the trail must have been every bit of probably two to three hours we drove through there all over. Some of the little goats and things. You're starting to see some zebra back in the corner here. And um, the little national thing that's on their flag is a springbuck, so these were the little horns. You started seeing them quite a bit, too. There they are. Uh, they had, and this place right here, it, like I said, it took two and a half hours to get there. I'm not sure how many miles that was, but they had a hippo somehow break out of this reserve, and it swam the whole coastline down and then come back into a harbor where Sister Rebecca's parents live. So it was on the loose, and um, they ended up having to take it down to try to attack someone. They had all kinds of... Did it kill them? Yeah, I couldn't remember. So yeah, they had to take it down. It killed someone. And, and I believe Alvin said that hippos attack more than lions do there. It's, everybody thinks a hippo is slow, but apparently they charge. So... Here's a little donkey or burrow that was in there. There's another war hog. Pumba. You can see him all over the place. <laughs> That's a Lion King junk if you don't know. <laughs> there was a little lizard <laughs> that was right there that was on the road. And then we finally seen some giraffes and they were really tall, a lot taller than what I imagined. You can see the top of the trees and their heads sticking out right there. And there they are. Uh, later on, and almost towards the end of it, they, they told us that you know all the animals kind of migrate together. So we started seeing them all mixed in there. So there was zebra and giraffes right next to each other. Here's our one little monkey we saw. <laughs> Here's a little gray monkey, and that's the kind that they have that come through this city there. And there's a hippo right there. And a wildebeest. And there, one crossed the road, so we had to stop and wait for it to get out of the way. So that was Brother Allen and them in front of us right there with Brother Ram. There's a 
zebras. Some of these look closer than what I remember taking, so I don't know <laughs> if I use Zoom or what. <laughs> There's a rhino right in the back that is laying down. <laughs> yeah, right at the end. And there was a bunch of them crossing the water there. The one thing, stop right there. These are some of the little kids that was walking back by themselves. Um... It, you know, like I said, there was just tons of little kids come out of the school, and they were all going down the road. And this was a narrow road; it wasn't very wide at all. And cars were just zooming right past. And and at some points, they were waiting to dart across the road. So, you know, it it made you appreciate what you know we are able to let our kids do here. The one thing that we did say about the animals. Um, you go to a zoo here and sometimes the animals are just sitting there and they look depressed that they're stuck there. I mean, these animals were out just moving around. So it, it was interesting to see them where they just free to roam around all over the place in their natural habitat. Those are just more pictures from the hotel looking around. And then on our last day here, we're getting ready to come up on it over there. One back. I'm not a picture taker, so it was really hard for me trying to get these things in order to make it a little bit flow a little better. Okay, it does rain in Africa too, so. <laughs> It's usually always sunny, but one day um, it got really dark and, and it stormed pretty bad. So it um, looks like some of our skies here that we see. Okay, here is the place we went the last day or the day before we left. Um, and I can't even remember the name now. Mabita, Moses Mabita Stadium. And it's where the 2010 FIFA World Cup was done. And... Um, this place holds like 56,000 people. So it was really an amazing feat of architecture to see. We too were able to take a tour inside of it. And right here on this track, you can see a little speck there at the top. That's a little tram, a little boxcar that holds 20 people. And you get on it, and it takes three minutes to get to the top. So we all rode that. And um, that's a view from the top right there going up it. And it, it was really interesting. You could see all of Durban right there. And the seats look like there's people sitting there, but what they did was they colored the seats individual. So if they do have a game going on and the camera's panning, it still looks as though the audience is full. So that was kind of clever how they did that. You could see from the top everywhere. They do have two casinos there, so we got to see them. The one of them's right there on the right. We didn't go in, so don't worry. <laughs> you can see the city how busy it's just it went on for miles and miles it was really amazing how big the city of Durban is the city that brother and sister Ram live in is called Tongat and then the city that the hotel was in is Umschlange and that's the only two African words I know so <laughs> it um it's just more shots of the stadium. Now, on the one side was the tram going up, and then on this side here, it splits down into a Y. You can walk it if you want. And if you walk up it and then turn around and come back down, you get a certificate that you actually made it. So none of us were that brave to try that, though. Because <laughs> you can see there's no railings. It's just flat. It, it was kind of a little eerie looking to be there. And here's inside the stadium when we went in there. Um, right here, stop right here. Um, this is where the 
this the design of the stadium, if you're looking at it from an aerial shot on top, you have the stadium on both sides, and then the one side that comes down where the tram was, and it splits in the Y, that's actually the design of the Zulu War Shield. So that's how that was designed. And the fourth rung up on that, they bungee jumped from that. And again, none of us were that brave to do that either. But um, they, it has tarps that covers almost all the audience, and they're designed in a way that when it rains, it washes them. So it was pretty amazing to see that. Here's Brother Allen. Steve Nelson. That's just the top of the arch right there. They actually have natural grass on the inside. It's just turf around the sides where we were able to walk. And that's back outside. And that's a sign that said Durban, um, welcome. And it has written in all different types of language, welcome, too, on it. So there was little tours going on of school kids there the same day we were there. So they were all excited to get to go around. And that's the end of the staircase where you can come down. So I think we got a picture of Brother Allen on it. Here's Elsie. This was just driving through the city, and I believe this is our last day now. It, um, the roads are definitely something to get used to. It's they drive on the left side of the road, like we're on the right. So um, they don't have four ways; they have these circles that you kind of have to keep getting into a loop and driving around. So it was kind of interesting for all of us trying to figure out how do you know when you're supposed to go, who has the right of way. That was our hotel right there that we were in. There's one of their bridges that goes across. They even had a bridge that was just for pedestrians built to get across the highway. Um, and that's the roads right there that I was telling you about. That's just, you know, no trash, nothing on them. That was Sister Angie right there with Ruth. And this was down by the beach. They took us down the last day. There we stopped and was looking at it for a little bit. <laughs> that was inside that um, mall that we were at right there. This was, that one right there was driving back from that Zulu where the little school kids were. And it was Sister Nolene with Ruth. And that was the last night there. They took us down to see it. And this was when we was getting ready to leave. And that was Brother Kershaw and then Elaine. Okay, you stop. That's it. So it was... Um, it was just an amazing time. Um, I don't know how to even say what it is. It, um, it, like Ruth said, they were so hungry just to meet us, and it was just a very humbling experience. They treated us like royalty, but the blessing was, to me, on our end, we were able to just meet such wonderful people who were so hungry in the Lord. And they just desire so much to be here. And um, they ask so many questions. Um, they listen to everything on there. They know so much about each of us here. And you just feel bad that you don't know that much about them. But um, they would welcome anyone who wants to come over there. And they will show you a good time. 
when brother, when we were planning the trip, Brother Ram called me and he he kept saying, "I promise you, we'll treat you good." And you know, uh, I didn't have to worry about that. They just did everything that they could, and um, it was just such a blessing. And I just thank the Lord for you know being with us. When Brother Allen asked me if we wanted to go, uh, you know, I said yes, but in my mind I was thinking, I don't know. Sometimes the reason I have some health conditions that I just wasn't for sure. And I knew this would probably be a lot of walking, and, you know, Ruth had never flown before, and I knew what it was like going up and down in the airplane, the ear problems that it has. And, you know, Satan tried right up there to the end. That week before we left, she had a migraine and was just throwing up. They've gotten worse, and she's throwing up with them, and her ears were bothering her. And I just thought, Lord, you're going to have to help us to be able to do this. And um, she didn't even feel good Sunday when we left, but Monday morning she woke up and she said, David, I feel great. So, you know, I just kept telling myself, the Lord has to have something. You know, it's meant for some reason for us to go. And I just thank him. He kept us healthy to where we were able to get up and walk, and we did so much walking there. It was just really enjoyable to see everything and um they they are just wonderful people you just you can't meet somebody finer and um they really have wonderful testimonies and i'm sure you'll hear more about that part from brother allen but um they're just very hungry and what they've went through to be able to get this gospel and to listen to it and um like I said, to be able to have a witness to them that saw the message from Brother Branham and, you know, has been here through all of Faith Assembly's ministry, they were just so appreciative of that. And they're so strong in what they believe. And, you know, they have no doubt they saw conditions that, you know, took them out of where they were, and but they were standing with Faith Assembly. And um, it, it's just such a pleasure to meet someone who is you know dedicated it was a goal for me to look at or, or an example for me to look at and um the kids just you know they just treated their parents with such respect and um they just have each come their own way but the lord has worked in their lives and they were just you know i just can't say enough they just you know I don't know, I, we've answered so many questions to them, or, or tried to answer them, but they just ask so much about what Faith Assembly's like and what it's like here, and they just desire to be here so much. And, you know, like Ruth said, every time they went to the immigration office to try to just get the passport, it just, the woman was terrible, and why do you want to go? And, well, do you, have you ever met Brother Allen? Well, no. And, you know, so it was very hard for them to try to, you know, persuade them to grant it. They just wouldn't do it. So we're just praying and trusting that that's going to happen. And um, I, I believe it was in my heart that it will. It's just God has a time and a place for everything. But that's part of the reason why when I heard their testimonies, in my mind I thought the Lord done something wonderful for them to give them an anchor to hold on to until it is at a point in time that they'll be here. But even though they're over there, they're still part of this truth and this message. And, um, you know, where two or three are gathered, you know, he's in the presence. And they, they meet all the time. They watch the archives, and they have their church together. And the Lord's truly worked with them. It was just a blessing. And um, I like to thank Steve and Elsie, too. Um, like Ruth said, Steve just, he knows what to do, and he gets in there, and he gets things done. There was an issue with my ticket when we got there the first day. Everybody else's boarding pass was there, but mine wasn't. And um, he just steps right in without any questions. And, you know, I would have felt kind of lost. I haven't flown since I was 15. And um, he just takes that over. And, you know, it's it's a lot of stress to worry about, you know, when you're going to a foreign country, you're going through customs, they're asking all kinds of questions. And um, I know that he did that with Dad, and he's done that for a long time. And... That means a lot to me, that dad and mom had a someone to be with them, and they weren't going through all that by themselves. So from the bottom of my heart, Brother Steve and Sister Elsie, I can't thank you enough. And you've taken that on again with Brother Allen, and I appreciate that, that our pastor or Brother Bud, when they've traveled, 
they're there with them. They also themselves do whatever they can to take that stress off of you. And um, it's such a comfort. They are also a witness to that truth. You know, they were with Dad in his ministry, and now they're with Brother Allen and Brother Bud and theirs. And um, there was things that Steve was able to answer, you know, just on past um, trips and stuff that they had questions about. And and Steve just, he does that calling. To me, that's a calling also in, in what he does, and he does that very well. And um, I just thank him for that, for the stand that he's made too. And um, But I would just like to say to the Ram family, Brother Ram, Sister Angie, to all the children, it was an honor and a privilege to get to meet you, to spend time with you, to talk with you, to worship with you. And um, I'm looking forward to that day when you'll be able to come here. And um, I encourage anybody that wants to talk with them, do so. They would love it from the bottom of their heart. And um, it will be an encouragement to you to, to get to know them. And um, they're just so hungry for the truth. And um, I thank Brother Allen for asking us to go. It was a lifetime experience for us to do that. And um, I thank the Lord. You know, he makes all things possible. And um, I thank you for his grace and his mercy in my life and watching over us and everything. But I believe that's about it. I can't think of anything else. But it was wonderful. And um, I just thank the Lord for it. Grab your hand, Brother David, and shake it, but you got a way too quick for me. Uh, I agree with everything that both of them have said, and I did uh, call Brother Round this morning, and uh, I didn't get anybody, but they called back and said all the time. And he uh, talked with me just a minute and give it over. I believe it was his wife, but she couldn't talk. It's just tears. You don't know what they've gone through with to be where they're at. But maybe one day you'll get opportunity to hear their own testimony of of the things that they have been through to get where they're at and uh I just South Africa is a beautiful place, but the ones that we met were more beautiful than the place where it's gonna it's gonna take me a while to get over this. Because uh, we've been we've been to a lot of places. Every place we've ever been is they've treated us good, but they've these people have no pastor except faith assembly, and they never mention my name without mentioning Brother Bud's. And. It was just, I, I, I can't explain because whenever I started talking to them about a certain subject, they were just on their elbows on their table listening. 
And their dad really had a hard time working because he worked in the shipyards several miles away and the bus line don't run after six o'clock. And he had to thumb a ride for years there to get home. Go so far and then he'd have to get another ride to get on farther. And it was that away for years. And so finally he retired and the children told him, said, Dad, you and Mom have been so good to us. He said, you'll never have to worry for, about anything. We'll take care of you. And Brother Ram told me, he said, we never have a need. They take care of everything for us. And you know, to me, that speaks volumes. Of course, I, I will say more about it, but everywhere we go, they, they, the young ones, they can run from 26 to 31, the children do. And they were there with us. Every meal, they were there. Waited on us like royalty. And I'd like to say this, from the very beginning of the trip to the end, they took care of everything. They took care of our trip, every meal, everything. And it's just a, a joy to know people that are so hungry for truth and they expressed what a what a privilege it was for us to be there and the what we had give up to be there. But it wasn't wasn't us that had give up so much. It made me feel just about that tall and sometimes smaller. When I'd I would hear them say that. And then after that they said that uh, then we just uh, try to express what they had done for us. And it was just a joy and a privilege. And I know the Lord will bless them for all they do and for all they've gone through because they've, as Brother David said, they were never given the privilege to know what our website was. Her sister found it on her own. And it was just a grace of God that she found it. May the Lord bless our brothers and sisters. And I thank you people for your concern for us while we were gone praying for us. And may the Lord bless you. Appreciate you. And as Brother David said, I... I could never travel like that I have if it hadn't been for Brother Steve and Sister Elsie. I'm so grateful to them. They've treated me like a like a father to them and I appreciate that so much. Brother David and Sister Ruth, they were a witness of truth while we we're gone and I appreciate that and I appreciate faith assembly tonight may God bless you I've turned it back over to brother Bud at this point amen well I don't know what else I can add just let us stand if we would I'll get Brother David to come back out and give us a song. If anyone has a need for prayer, then you feel free to come right on.
be like Jesus on earth alone to be like Him all through life's journey from birth to glory I only ask to be like you to be like Jesus to be like Jesus on earth alone to be like you services Sunday and uh, just remember your brothers and sisters in prayer. Brother Hill, could I get you to dismiss us in prayer?